It's about nine o'clock at night and we're following the police to the scene of a shooting. In El Salvador, someone is killed every few hours. There's a turf war between two gangs, MS-13 and 18th Street, and the police. We're on our way to the latest shooting. They say some of their officers came under fire from a gang. They returned fire and killed one of them. The police are taking us into an area of the capital, San Salvador, that's controlled by MS-13, who could attack at any moment. No one's talking. MS-13 has a strict code. Watch, listen, and keep your mouth shut. There's clearly some family of the person who has been shot dead and uh, an older family member who is sobbing away just behind me. And it's a very nervous scene here and the police look pretty jumpy too. The police say the man shot at them, so they killed him. There's a very tense situation here now. The family have moved away, but there is a boy here who we believe is the dead man's nephew and he's only 13 or 14 years old and he's very, very upset and has been muttering, I want to kill the police. Solo estamos esperando este apoyo por la cuestión de que eh, como eh, cuando así la pandilla pierde un miembro, muchas veces buscan la venganza. Aproximadamente 16 años, un joven. Pues la verdad que para la familia sí es una tragedia. Lamentablemente el joven es reconocido pandillero de este sector. Gang-related killings have made El Salvador one of the world's deadliest countries. La calle Rubén Darío nuevamente se tiñó de sangre. But this is where President Trump is sending thousands of Salvadoran deportees, many of whom went to the US to escape the violence decades ago. Most come back to live with relatives in dangerous neighborhoods in a country they barely know. It means quickly learning the gang's rules, including their extortion rackets and control over exactly who comes in and out. We're only safe in this street for a few minutes, and that's with an armed police escort. Areas like this in El Salvador are completely controlled by the gangs. They know everybody who lives here. They know who doesn't belong. And all the businesses in this area are being extorted. They're being taxed. Big public places like shopping malls are among the few spaces people feel relatively safe from the gangs. Meeting me here is a man who was deported last year from Texas. Hi, I'm Chris. Hi, hello, nice to meet you. Nice I'm to Rene. meet you. Rene tells me about the life he built in America over 14 years, working in a souvenir shop to support the son he's had to leave behind. Why did you go to the States when you were a kid? Because, um, my dad got killed. How did that happen? Gang members. Principio, cuando empiezas, ellos quieren que te unas a su pandilla, y si tú no te unes, they kill all your family. When Rene's father was killed, his family paid people smugglers to get the boy to America. As a young man, he got caught up in a fight. He says it was self-defense, but he was jailed for five years for assault and upon release was deported. Now back at his mother's home, the gang controls his life completely. And you have to pay the gangs now just to live here? If you don't pay, you know what's going to happen. It's not easy. It's not easy, bro, but... That's why I want to go back. Meeting Rene is giving me a real sense of how deportees face terrible choices. Trying to resist joining the gangs can get you or your family killed. La
Televisión Salvadoreña. Un hombre fue asesinado sobre la calle Amatillo de la colonia El Progreso en el municipio de Mexicanos. El cadáver presentaba dos lesiones de arma de fuego en la cabeza. The MS-13 and 18th Street gangs began in the United States, formed by immigrants fleeing El Salvador's civil war in the 1980s. Ever since, as people have been deported over the years, they've brought those gangs to El Salvador. I'm headed to one place where I can talk to gang members without them or me risking our lives. In prison. San Francisco Gotera is a jail for 18th Street gang members. Former inmate Wilfredo Gomez is taking me in to meet deportees like him who ended up joining the gang. He's now helping them prepare for life on the outside. So, Wilfredo, why, why were you sent here? Um, well, I was put in here because um, I got arrested for strong arm robbery while I uh, was living out here in El Salvador. And um, I got caught and I got sentenced to 10 years. So when you got to this jail, what was it like? They have a lot of gangs that are violent within the prisons. It was terrible, they just had a massacre. Mm. Wilfredo lived in Los Angeles with his family before being deported in 2006. How did you come to be deported? Uh, I ended up getting involved in gangs. Being a gang member was like the thing to do, you know. You had popularity, acceptance, you know. How easy is it to avoid the gangs when you get out? It ain't easy at all. It ain't easy. Especially if you're marked. If you have a tattoo on you, there's no way you could avoid them. And it's still a problem for Wilfredo. So where are your tattoos? Can I see them? Of course. So that's the 18? Yes. Wilfredo's childhood friend Orlando joined 18th Street with him as teenagers in L.A. When Orlando was also deported, his tattoos made it impossible to hide his gang history. You arrived in this country with a big 18 on your face. So did you have any choice but to join the gang? So I was coming in the plane and, and I, was, I was nervous because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go, especially me having the tattoo on my face. And I, I was like, man, what am I going to do? I didn't have nobody for me over here because I left this country when I was five years old. So when I came back here, I didn't know nothing. I didn't know nothing. Uh, I actually felt that I needed to look for the gang because uh, I knew that if I went to a wrong place, I most likely I was going to end up dead. So you didn't really have any choice? Yeah, I didn't have no choice. We've only been in El Salvador a few days, and there have already been reports of dozens of murders. In between two neighborhoods controlled by these rival gangs sits La Chacra. It's the arrivals lounge for deportees fresh off the plane from the US. Donald Trump's immigration crackdown has seen an increase in deportations of undocumented migrants who haven't committed crimes. Hundreds arrive each week, removed for not being able to prove they were in the US legally. They were all born in El Salvador, but many were taken to America as children by parents escaping the Civil War. They have no memory of life here. Most are too scared to talk to us. But one person wants to share his story. I lived in the state of Maryland. I had my husband, two sons, I had a business. Why are you afraid to show your face? For the pandillas that are in this country. Have you got any criminal convictions in the States? No. He tells me he flew back here after 14 years in the States to get the paperwork required to apply for U.S. residency. But his application was rejected, so he tried to cross the border illegally. 
He was caught and deported today. Do you think you'll ever make it back to the States? No. Si uno es deportado la primera vez y entras ilegalmente otra vez, ahí te arresta y te te vuelven a deportar. No sé qué es lo que me espera aquí ahorita. Juan Pablo Blanco Molina. It's been a couple of hours since we arrived and I've talked to a lot of people in the room, but it's very striking. People are afraid to speak to us because of what will happen to them when they get out of here and the gangs find out. Later that evening, I'm about to learn how deportees can find themselves suddenly on the wrong side of the gangs without realizing. I'm meeting the sister of 21-year-old Henry Ayala. Hi, Chris. Henry's family say he was deported from the US after unpaid speeding tickets prompted a check on his immigration status. He disappeared soon after arriving here. Henry's sister is too scared to show her face. Tell me about the day Henry disappeared. When he came él por medio de una vecina conoció a dos amigos sí, a lo que son una clica de MS. What do you believe happened to him? Que las personas lo, lo desaparecieron. Quizás pudiera hacer cosas malas como ellos, que mi hermano no quiso. Pues le pasó a eso. On average, over the last five years, one deportee has been killed every month. La televisión salvadoreña. La víctima tenía varios tatuajes, algunos de ellos alusivos a las pandillas. I'm meeting Rene again. He's sure the gangs will kill him just as they killed his father, if he doesn't escape. So he's made a big decision. And do you have a rucksack? Uh, what backpack. Happened? Oh, backpack, yes. You got one, yeah. René's heard of a caravan, a large group of migrants traveling to the US border. He's decided to join it and is shopping for supplies. How much walking do you think you'll have to do and how much on the bus? Well, I'm not, I'm not really sure, but they say that like we're going to walk the whole way, all the way to Tijuana. So it's really? going gonna, gonna to take us like about 30 to 40 days. Around one in five people deported from the United States try to make it back illegally. If Rene is caught, he could spend years in jail before being deported again to El Salvador. It's risky what you're doing, isn't it, going on the caravan? Yeah, very risky. So why are you doing it? I have to. I don't have another way. You know, I live 40 years over there, and now to go back over here, no say nada, so I'm like a stranger over here. It's like being in jail. While René is desperate to leave, Wilfredo has committed to staying in El Salvador and helping other deportees escape the gangs. In the jail where he discovered a way out of gang violence just last year, Wilfredo. he's showing me how he now persuades okay. others right. to take the same so, route. This is the This yeah. is the miracle. Wilfredo found God in jail and now comes back to spread the word. The church is uniquely respected by the gangs, so they leave Wilfredo alone now he's out of jail. The whole prison seems to be learning from his lesson. How did the whole prison become Christian? I guess I was like a testimony to them. You know, if someone that came from the United States that's supposed to be a hardcore gang member could turn into Christianity and change his life, then anyone else could. 
Is being a Christian now the only way out of a gang? Yeah, it's either Christianity or a black bag, plastic bag. That's it. Ustedes, yo quiero abrazar esta visión. Yo quiero hacer lo mismo que ustedes están haciendo. The next morning, Wilfredo tells me to meet him at an office block to visit a call center. They're one of the biggest growth businesses in El Salvador, crying out for English speakers. Eleven. Yeah. He's with Freddy, another deportee who got out of prison last week, who's trying to go straight and get a job here. Hey, Alex. Pleasure. Freddy, right? Pleasure. Come on. Good to have a seat. How are you doing, Freddie? So do many people from the prison get taken on? I have helped out people before, and um, they're still working. They're back with their families. They started a new life. They have kids. They become Salvadorian citizens. Pretty much you call them and you just But the manager seems to be having doubts. Everything Freddie is wearing shouts gang member. Change your dress code. Change your style. I'll tell you because definitely that's going to take you a long way. You may not feel comfortable. Right? Yeah. It may feel weird at times. But hey, it's really worth changing. Okay. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Pleasure, man. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right. This guy got a dress. You got to change your shoes. Yeah, the shoes, um, I think. That shirt got to go. That hat got to go. Yeah. Uh, the lobes got to go. The <laughs> necklace got to go. I mean... Yeah, next time I'll come, I'll come a little bit more decent. Uh, you gotta dress way different over here. Freddie didn't get this job, but he's learned a lesson for next time. Wilfredo well, has his own image problem. He has two small 18th Street tattoos on his face that give away the gang history he's left behind. He wants to get rid of them, but there's a long waiting list for tattoo removal. Without the same belief in God that gives Wilfredo an invincible confidence, René is simply terrified and feels he has no choice but to flee the country again. I wanted to go and see René at his house, but he says it's far too dangerous for us to go over there and there are gang members everywhere. So he sent me a video message. René is planning for every eventuality. Before René heads out with the caravan, I've just got time to catch up with Wilfredo. He's had some good news. He's got an appointment today at the government-run clinic to have his face tattoos removed. This little small tattoo, I'm gonna try to get it removed, so I gotta shave before I go in there. Um, what does it say? 18th Street. When did you get that done? When I was 14 years old. I don't want to be flashing them out here, you know. Any little bit of ink they see, right away they could just spot you out. Como dice, no tiene mucho tiempo, no porque quería que me hiciera esto también. Pero entonces le voy a trabajar este y este. Y este. Ajá. Bueno. Sí, pero ya lo tengo. It is. Son varios tratamientos que se requieren para eliminarse totalmente. Vale. Okay, that's it. Shall I take a snap of it? That's the uh, 18th Street gone. Yeah. What does LA mean here? Oh, that means that I'm I'm from the states and. I'm a target for everyone. For them, it's like a bigger mission to take out a deportee. Do you have friends who've been killed that way? Yes, many. Removing the tattoos seems to have given Wilfredo a new clarity 
of how much his gang life has cost him. What does getting rid of this mean to you? It's actually wiping away the mistakes that I made. It caused so much pain in me. Lost my family, lost my kid, lost my life. Do you think you'll ever get a chance to go back to America? No. I was deported for life. It's not worth it, you know, crossing the border, being charged, getting in trouble, probably getting a bunch of years and then coming back again. But Rene believes it's worth the risk. It's a heartbreaking goodbye for his mother. Unsure when or if she'll see him again. Around 250 people leave El Salvador every day. Many of them, like René, chancing their luck with the caravans heading to America. He's joining a huge group of people, gathering for a daunting 3,000-mile journey. What did your mother say? Don't leave. It's sad, you know. It broke my heart, but... What can I do? You feel optimistic? Kind of tired. I'm thinking a lot of stuff. I gotta think if the money is enough. Si tengo agua. Si voy a tener frío. As well as escaping the gangs, Rene has another growing reason to get back to America. How important is it to you to see your son? Yeah, he's growing up. If they stop you at the border, at the US border, what happens? Jail. Jail. I even feel like more safe in jail than over here. <laughs> Life is a risk. O sea, no sé, si voy a regresar vivo, muerto. It's obvious why families are joining the caravan. There is safety in numbers, and when they get to the border, many of them are happy to hand themselves in and try to claim asylum. But if you're a deportee from the United States, if you're caught at the border, you will be thrown in jail. And at the end of several years in prison, you will be deported again. So people like René are taking a big risk. The flow of deportees coming the other way is expected to grow. President Trump says he'll deport another 200,000 next year, many facing the same hard choices as René and Wilfredo. Thanks for watching. Click the logo to subscribe for more award-winning documentaries from the Unreported World team. We upload videos every Sunday, keeping you up to date with content from all over the world.